General Education Diploma, English Language A, Listening, 2014 to 2015, Semester Two, Second Session. While I'm reading your instructions, the teacher will check from the back of the class to make sure that everybody can hear. The teacher will not stop the CD. You will hear each text three times. The first time, only listen. The second time, complete the task. And the third time, check your work. The examination will start now. Question 1. Look at question 1 on your exam paper. You're going to hear a conversation between a novelist and a film producer. But first you have 30 seconds to study the task. Now listen for the first time. Morning, Mark. Now before we start, let me first congratulate you on the success of The Open Window. It's a wonderful film. Thanks. Uh, but I couldn't have done it without the beautiful story that it was based on. Thank you. Anyway, as I told you on the phone, I've been looking at a couple more of your novels. Uh, the Visitor and The House by the Lake. Oh, I prefer The Visitor. So do I. It's another of your classic love stories, full of romance. But to make a film out of it, we'll need to make a few small changes. For example? Well, uh, for a start, there are too many secondary characters, uh, such as the hero's old school friends, and uh, some of the heroine's relatives. Yes, I can see that. They're probably not really necessary to tell the story. OK, we can cut some of them out. Good. Now, uh, what about the way the novel ends, uh, with the hero being killed in a car crash? Can't we keep him alive somehow? You know I don't like sad endings, and neither do our audiences. No, I don't think I can allow that. It would change the whole meaning of the story. Maybe, but... Uh, can't we have him just badly injured in the accident, and then recovering after a few months? No, it doesn't feel right to me. Look, who's going to be our scriptwriter? Will it be Stephen Emerson again? Yes, we hope so. He did a great job on the open window, didn't he? He certainly did. So, why don't we just wait and discuss the ending later with him? OK, fair enough. Uh, next, we need to talk about money. Uh, now, how much do you want for the copyright of your novel? Half a million dollars. Half a million? But last time it was only 350,000. Why the increase? You're making a lot of money from the open window, aren't you? Yes, but... OK, I'll accept 450,000, but I'd also like to keep some parts of the copyright. What do you mean? I'll sell you the copyright for the film, but I want to keep the right to produce a radio series sometime in the future. Hmm. OK, I agree to the price, but I'll need to discuss the exact copyright details with my lawyer. Fine. In fact, we should both talk to our lawyers, and then we can sign a contract. By the end of this month? Uh, let's make it next month. I'll be out of the country until the 6th. Uh, we can meet as soon as I come back. Excellent. I'm really looking forward to working with you again. Now listen again and complete the task. Morning, Mark. Now before we start, let me first congratulate you on the success of The Open Window. It's a wonderful film. Thanks. 
Uh, but I couldn't have done it without the beautiful story that it was based on. Thank you. Anyway, as I told you on the phone, I've been looking at a couple more of your novels. Uh, the Visitor and The House by the Lake. Oh, I prefer The Visitor. So do I. It's another of your classic love stories, full of romance. But to make a film out of it, we'll need to make a few small changes. For example? Well, uh, for a start, there are too many secondary characters, uh, such as the hero's old school friends and uh, some of the heroine's relatives. Yes, I can see that. They're probably not really necessary to tell the story. OK, we can cut some of them out. Good. Now, uh, what about the way the novel ends? Uh, with the hero being killed in a car crash. Can't we keep him alive somehow? You know I don't like sad endings, and neither do our audiences. No, I don't think I can allow that. It would change the whole meaning of the story. Maybe, but uh, can't we have him just badly injured in the accident, and then recovering after a few months? No, it doesn't feel right to me. Look... Who's going to be our scriptwriter? Will it be Stephen Emerson again? Yes, we hope so. He did a great job on the open window, didn't he? He certainly did. So, why don't we just wait and discuss the ending later with him? OK, fair enough. Uh, next, we need to talk about money. Uh, now, how much do you want for the copyright of your novel? Half a million dollars. Half a million? But last time it was only 350000 Why the increase? You're making a lot of money from the open window, aren't you? Yes, but... OK, I'll accept 450000 but I'd also like to keep some parts of the copyright. What do you mean? I'll sell you the copyright for the film, but I want to keep the right to produce a radio series sometime in the future. Hmm... OK, I agree to the price, but I'll need to discuss the exact copyright details with my lawyer. Fine. In fact, we should both talk to our lawyers, and then we can sign a contract. By the end of this month? Uh, let's make it next month. I'll be out of the country until the 6th. Uh, we can meet as soon as I come back. Excellent. I'm really looking forward to working with you again. Now listen for the last time and check your work. Morning, Mark. Now before we start, let me first congratulate you on the success of The Open Window. It's a wonderful film. Thanks. Uh, but I couldn't have done it without the beautiful story that it was based on. Thank you. Anyway, as I told you on the phone, I've been looking at a couple more of your novels. Uh, the Visitor and The House by the Lake. Oh, I prefer The Visitor. So do I. It's another of your classic love stories, full of romance. But to make a film out of it, we'll need to make a few small changes. For example? Well, uh, for a start, there are too many secondary characters, uh, such as the hero's old school friends and uh, some of the heroine's relatives. Yes, I can see that. They're probably not really necessary to tell the story. OK, we can cut some of them out. Good. Now, uh, what about the way the novel ends? Uh, with the hero being killed in a car crash. Can't we keep him alive somehow? You know I don't like sad endings, and neither do our audiences. No, I don't think I can allow that. It would change the whole meaning of the story. Maybe, but... Uh, can't we have him just badly injured in the accident, and then recovering after a few months? No, it doesn't feel right to me. Look, who's going to be our scriptwriter? Will it be Stephen Emerson again? Yes, we hope so. He did a great job on the open window, didn't he? He certainly did. So, why don't we just wait and discuss the ending later with him? OK, fair enough. Uh, next, we need to talk about money. Uh, now, how much do you want for the copyright of your novel? Half a million dollars. Half a million? 
but last time it was only 350,000. Why the increase? You're making a lot of money from the open window, aren't you? Yes, but... OK, I'll accept 450,000, but I'd also like to keep some parts of the copyright. What do you mean? I'll sell you the copyright for the film, but I want to keep the right to produce a radio series sometime in the future. Hmm. OK, I agree to the price, but I'll need to discuss the exact copyright details with my lawyer. Fine. In fact, we should both talk to our lawyers, and then we can sign a contract. By the end of this month? Uh, let's make it next month. I'll be out of the country until the 6th. Uh, we can meet as soon as I come back. Excellent. I'm really looking forward to working with you again. That is the end of question one. Now go on to question two. Look at question two on your exam paper. You're going to hear a woman telling us about her career. The text will be in two parts, each with a different task. But first you have 30 seconds to study the two tasks. Now listen to part one. Hi, my name's Linda Strachan and I'm an interior designer. I was born in the USA, but my father was a diplomat, and so the family travelled all over the world and lived in lots of different places. The best place we ever lived in was a beautiful house in Rome, where we stayed for two years. That house was what actually inspired me to study interior design. So, when I returned to the USA, that's exactly what I did. And in 2002, I graduated from Florida State University with a degree in interior design. I then went to work for a company in Miami. But, as I soon found out, they weren't interested in the ideas of a young designer like me. They never listened to me and they never gave me a chance. So I left, and now I work for a company in Atlanta, where the working atmosphere is much better. I still remember my first project. It was to design a kitchen for a celebrity chef. But my biggest achievement so far has been the lobby of the Grand Hotel in Atlanta. When I sat down to make the plans, I remembered our old house back in Rome. So the style is Italian but with plenty of modern glass and metal. It worked, and I actually won a prize for it. Now listen again and complete the task. Hi, my name's Linda Strachan, and I'm an interior designer. I was born in the USA, but my father was a diplomat, and so the family travelled all over the world and lived in lots of different places. The best place we ever lived in was a beautiful house in Rome, where we stayed for two years. That house was what actually inspired me to study interior design. So, when I returned to the USA, that's exactly what I did. And in 2002, I graduated from Florida State University with a degree in interior design. I then went to work for a company in Miami, but, as I soon found out, they weren't interested in the ideas of a young designer like me. They never listened to me, and they never gave me a chance. So I left, and now I work for a company in Atlanta, where the working atmosphere is much better. I still remember my first project. It was to design a kitchen for a celebrity chef. But my biggest achievement so far 
has been the lobby of the Grand Hotel in Atlanta. When I sat down to make the plans, I remembered our old house back in Rome. So the style is Italian, but with plenty of modern glass and metal. It worked, and I actually won a prize for it. Now listen for the last time and check your work. Hi, my name's Linda Strachan and I'm an interior designer. I was born in the USA, but my father was a diplomat, and so the family travelled all over the world and lived in lots of different places. The best place we ever lived in was a beautiful house in Rome, where we stayed for two years. That house was what actually inspired me to study interior design. So, when I returned to the USA, that's exactly what I did. And in 2002, I graduated from Florida State University with a degree in interior design. I then went to work for a company in Miami. But, as I soon found out, they weren't interested in the ideas of a young designer like me. They never listened to me and they never gave me a chance. So I left and now I work for a company in Atlanta where the working atmosphere is much better. I still remember my first project. It was to design a kitchen for a celebrity chef. But my biggest achievement so far has been the lobby of the Grand Hotel in Atlanta. When I sat down to make the plans, I remembered our old house back in Rome. So the style is Italian, but with plenty of modern glass and metal. It worked, and I actually won a prize for it. Now listen to part two. A typical working day? Well, I arrive at my office at eight and begin the day by replying to any emails I've received. After that, I make a few phone calls. Then I usually visit one of our construction sites. I have to check that they have all the materials they need and that the work is on schedule. However, my biggest concern is safety. Last year, there was a serious accident on one of the other projects. It cost the company a lot of money, so they're very strict about it now. I have to make sure everything is done properly, so that nobody gets hurt. After a quick lunch, I spend the afternoons in our showroom doing customer consultations. They tell me what they want and the styles and colours they prefer and I make suggestions. The showroom is actually quite small, and there's not enough space to show them all our different designs for walls, ceilings, lighting, furniture, and so on. That's why I've recently developed an electronic catalogue, which has made things much easier. And that's it, really. On my way home, I stop at the supermarket and buy something for dinner. After we've eaten, the whole family sit around together chat and watch TV. Now listen again and complete the task. A typical working day? Well, I arrive at my office at 8 and begin the day by replying to any emails I've received. After that, I make a few phone calls. Then I usually visit one of our construction sites. I have to check that they have all the materials they need and that the work is on schedule. However, my biggest concern is safety. Last year, there was a serious accident on one of the other projects. It cost the company a lot of money. So they're very strict about it now. I have to make sure everything is done properly so that nobody gets hurt. After a quick lunch, I spend the afternoons in our showroom doing customer consultations. They tell me what they want and the styles and colours they prefer, and I make suggestions. The showroom is actually quite small, and there's not enough space to show them all our different designs for walls, ceilings, lighting, furniture and so on. 
That's why I've recently developed an electronic catalogue, which has made things much easier. And that's it, really. On my way home, I stop at the supermarket and buy something for dinner. After we've eaten, the whole family sit around together, chat and watch TV. Now listen for the last time and check your work. A typical working day? Well, I arrive at my office at 8 and begin the day by replying to any emails I've received. After that, I make a few phone calls. Then I usually visit one of our construction sites. I have to check that they have all the materials they need and that the work is on schedule. However, my biggest concern is safety. Last year, there was a serious accident on one of the other projects. It cost the company a lot of money, so they're very strict about it now. I have to make sure everything is done properly, so that nobody gets hurt. After a quick lunch, I spend the afternoons in our showroom doing customer consultations. They tell me what they want and the styles and colours they prefer, and I make suggestions. The showroom is actually quite small and there's not enough space to show them all our different designs for walls, ceilings, lighting, furniture and so on. That's why I've recently developed an electronic catalogue, which has made things much easier. And that's it, really. On my way home, I stop at the supermarket and buy something for dinner. After we've eaten, the whole family sit around together, chat and watch TV. Thank you. That is the end of the listening examination. Now go on to the next question.